one, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I was just saying that, you know, it, it actually, the, the Rebbe says that Purim actually happened because of Moshe Rabbeinu. So call me crazy, but I'm like, you know what? Like maybe Pesach happened because of the Rebbe because there's no time in Torah, you know? <laughs> but anyway. Shkoyach, I like that chiddush. So, um, but now, but we know that Nisan is an extremely holy and lichtic month, so we're very excited about it. So I'm learning this, 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 um, this mimer. And so, I mean, I'm, I, I'm like in my fourth time around learning it. It's, it's the one from the year Yid Beis, and it's a little bit complicated. It's pretty amazing how Tara really opens up for you after you learn it a few times. Like it's, like you start to see the connections for the concepts, like how each concept leads into the other. And I didn't see it the first time or the second or the third time I learned it. It's just starting to open up for me. But there's one point that I wanted to share at the end of the mimer. So first of all, I didn't know this, but if you look at the Pusik, it says, like in the days that you left Egypt, I will show you wonders. And it, it's actually, it changes from um, second person to third person. So when it's saying like in the days you left Egypt, speaking to the Jewish people in second person, and the, then it says, and I will show, it actually says him wonders. I will show him wonders. Like it changes to third person. So the, the Mepharshim tell us what it really is referring to as Moshe Rabbeinu. Like in the days you left Egypt, I will show him wonders. Like but the, the Hashem's going to show the wonders to Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Rebbe at the end of, the, of this mimer says, if you want to perceive the miracles of the Geul, you have to reveal your spark of Moshe. So the way I always understand that is, so I always think about, you know, we just finished Adar, that it says that the, I don't know if I mentioned this in the other for bringing we did, but it's a really beautiful idea that when anyone would see Esther Hamalka, they would, um, they would love her. They lo everyone loved her. So it's explained that the reason why they loved her is because she was the per like so perfect that so she she would reflect back to you your own most perfected self. So when you looked at her, you saw your highest, most best expression of you. And that's why everybody loved her. So everybody saw something different. So I was thinking like, how do we reveal our spark of Moshe? Like, what does that even mean? That sounds so like reveal your spark of Moshe. Okay, like what? But the way that I understand it is, well, look at the Rebbe. The Rebbe is our Moshe. Look at the Rebbe and see your most perfected self and bring that out. And there, and there, and there have a says in the mimer. So, so really, ultimately, what does it mean to reveal your spoke of, spark of Moshe? It means to have kashra. Learn the Rebbe's Torah, do the Rebbe's Hayraz. And in that way, you reveal your most perfected self. And, and, and that's actually how you'll perceive the miracles of the Geula that are unfolding around us. Um, in your own personal life and, and in the world. So, um, so L'chaim to that, I think that was really um, the topic of last week was really seeing the effect of our Tara mitzvahs. Um, this week, we're going to talk more about Simchan Batachan, but I, I think that if there's anything, any avoda that the Rebbe is telling us to do, talk about is kashrit and listening to Rebbe's Hayraz, I think if there's two things the Rebbe talks about the most, it might be Simcha and Batachan. <laughs> so there's no question that in strengthening our Simcha and strengthening our Batachan, we will merit to see the ultimate miracles of the Gula, of the Gula Shlima. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mechaim, Mechaim Libracha. Beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. How do you do that? Sorry, did someone ask something? Yeah, how do you increase your simcha and bitachon? That's great. That's a great question. I think that's actually what we're going to talk about. Um, Liat, did you, Liat Bracha, did you have, did you have some thoughts you wanted to say? I start? have some words to say. I do. Okay, I have to get into it. <laughs> All right. So what I want to share about simcha and bitachon. Um, okay. 
So I learned something really nice. Um, I read it on Chabad.org about Simcha, finding Simcha in like dark times. And we find ourselves in the last moments of Galas and the first moments uh, leading into the Geula. And um, so there's still that dichotomy of, of the darkness and the light, right? And we choose which where we want to step into, right? So um, this article is describing that um, about Simcha, if Simcha was like, what was it? I'm just going to, I don't want to misquote it. If we were to like bake a cake, would Simcha be like another ingredient in our Yiddishkeit? So the article was the, explaining that Simcha is not just another ingredient in our Yiddishkeit. Simcha is the oven in which you like bake the cake. So like our whole Yiddishkeit, what it really comes down to, the expression of our Yiddishkeit, the result of it, of our of our discussions to the Rebbe, of our bound with Yibishter is all expressed in our unconditional simcha. And um, I'm using the word unconditional simcha because the Rebbe used it when the Rebbe said, they're like, you know, after everything we've done and all the Masinu and Vayda, Seinu calls man Meshach HaGalas, all of our Vayda throughout the generations to bring Mashiach and Mashiach is still not here. What do we have left to do? And um, the Rebbe said, perhaps. Like, you know, he's teaching us how to think now in this time of how to bring Mashiach. So perhaps the Avaidah of Simcha, perhaps we need to do an Avaidah of Simcha, but not Simcha as it's related to a mitzvah, Simcha Shil Mitzvah, not Simcha as it's related to, I don't know, something <laughs> that's tied to something in particular. But Simcha, the Rebbe said, Simcha Beta Rasa. And you know, you can translate it as like a pure simcha or an authentic simcha or a pristine, perfect simcha. I found the word unconditional simcha to be the best translation um, because he's saying it's a kind of simcha that has no reason, no rhyme or reason to it beyond above logic and if we want to like get to mashiach the, the rebbe said simcha to bring mashiach simcha because we know that mashiach is coming we know that for a fact also as a promise as a nivua and if we open our eyes we'll see that the gula is here so we have all the reason to be the simcha but simcha for no reason at all not tied to like no strings attached and in order to bring mashiach and and uh, we know that Mashiach is all about going, it's all about like the sphere of the number eight, right? Like eight is beyond nature, it's beyond Tam Vedas. So Simcha is like that direct channel to bring us there because we know that when do we really like find ourselves when in a, a Simcha is like that transcendent state where you no longer feel yourself. You no longer are tied down to your own um your own uh, limited perception and so on and so forth. So Simcha is really what allows us to go beyond ourselves and reach that place that is above Tam Vedas, that Nekuda Sayyad is that pin to Yid that is bound up with Hashem in a perfect way. And that allows us to express that unconditional commitment that we have to the Abishter, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in. So if we look at Simcha um, as the oven that bakes the cake, so, so we understand that, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? <laughs> so basically, Simcha is really what expresses who we are as Yidin. So, and, and it's our Pintaliyid, our Pintaliyid. And also, like, there's the, um, there's the, the prophecy, the, the, whatever, the, the, like, when Mashiach comes, it says, Av Yemalitz Chaik Pinu that when our simcha is going to reach its ultimate perfection and completion, and the Gula Mitzvah especially, our mouths will be filled with joy in our in, in the accomplishment that we have in bringing Mashiach and in experiencing godliness in a revealed way. And our commitment to Hashem, our bond with Hashem, coming to its, to its shlemas and being revealed to the whole world. So it'll be the ultimate simcha, all in unity together. Um, so... So actually, I was listening to a podcast by, um, it was the Inside 
In and Out, Inside Out, Inside Out by um, Ida Schottenstein and, and Rivka Levy. I, I hope I'm getting their names right. Um, uh, do you know that podcast, Sarah? I think it's Rivka Krinsky. Right? Krinsky. Ah, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you for correcting me. I haven't okay, listened yeah. to it, but I've seen, I've seen it. So a recent one, they interviewed Dennis Prager. So he has this book called um, uh, Happiness is a Problem, something like that. And he he's a person that I don't know him. I just know him from this interview, but he's been through a lot. Like the, I suggest listening to the interview. I really enjoyed it. But he said something interesting. He said that a yid who's keeping observing tired mitzvahs, who is not doing it b'simcha, is a chilol Hashem. And I liked what he said, because you know what? That's the Tyra says in, in Parshas Kisavai, Tachas asher la'yavadisa es Hashem b'simcha. That the curses that are in Parshas Kisavai come to, on to the Jewish people when they're not serving Hashem b'simcha. That doesn't sound so gulitic, but if you think about it, because when we're not b'simcha, that's the channel for sin. And we know that curses come, right? When we do the Hashem's Tehran Mitzvah, the like, consequence, the, the uh, immediate effect of it is that it affects the world. It affects the, the Gashmi's world, our material life. But, and when we fall, fall through, right, and, and we're led to sin, so the opposite of Bracha Chas Visham. But um, so it makes sense to say that it's a chilal Hashem when we're not serving Hashem b'simcha. So we need to allow ourselves to be b'simcha for no reason, right? To smile to ourselves, to smile to the people around us, and to smile to the Ebishter for no reason at all. And I call that unconditional simcha. Simcha betarasa, but the simcha betarasa, as the Rebbe says, to bring Mashiach. And um, and I wanted to say that. Um, another thing I want to say about Simcha. Can I interrupt you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Please. So, because I want to just say that this idea of Simcha for no reason, I think that could be a little bit confusing for people. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of like the conversation that we were having the other day about being and doing. Like saying having Simcha for no reason sounds like just be. And right. That that I that, agree. A little definitionless for people. Right. I know the mimer that so the mimer that you're referring to is actually um from the year Mem Zion. It's okay. I'm actually, gonna find it. It's pretty famous mimer. It's translated into English. See because in English has it. It's called um I, I actually have it here too, but whatever oh, I have I'll it. I'll look for it when someone else is speaking so that I don't digress too okay. much. But the rabbit does say in the in in brackets, yeah. Even though simcha um, b'tarasa, like you're saying, this pure simcha that's not necessarily um, connected to a specific Indian in terms. Right. Rabbi says that for a Jew, our simcha is always connected to Tarn mitzvahs. It's never like mm -hmm. from that. So I think you know when you say having simcha that's above Tam Vadas, like I've seen the Rabbi say many times in letters that to to Yidin when he's telling them to be b'simcha. Hi, Hani. He he says. Hi, I'm um, trying to figure out how to uh, like turn on my video. The, mm, do you yeah, see me? Yes, no, yeah. we Remember can't the, see you. Oh, right. It looks dark. Okay, well, we'll we'll be working on it while I'm listening. Sorry, I'm late. Okay, <laughs> welcome, oh, Hani. Uh, you're both here. Okay, amazing. Um, Hani. So, so sorry, I was talking about. Oh, so. So I've seen letters of the Rebbe where the Rebbe says that as a Jew, we have plenty to be to be happy about. So I think that right. what you were saying it's like that Nakuda Sayyid. So right. is above Seichal. It's, a, it's exactly. an essential part of us that is totally one with Hashem. And as it manifests in this world, it becomes separate from Hashem only so that we can then have a relationship with Hashem. And right. so the way that I understand Simcha in its purest form is kind of like in a marriage when you're in a relationship with someone, like, you know, if you're just sitting there like doing a checklist, like, oh, you know, like I'm just, you know, I'll, I'm, I'll do all the things that you want because I'm married to you and I committed to you, but you do it with a frown on your face. That's not really like exactly what kind of relationship is that. 
So the way I understand Simcha as sort of like the, like you said, the oven in which all of our, um, everything else cooks, the way I see it is like, when you're a basimcha, you're basically showing that you're happy to be in this relationship. Exactly. And I think that's what Dennis Prager is saying. He's right. saying, if you're doing tyrant mitzvahs with a frown on your face, like you're saying, what are you showing everybody else? Like it needs to be visible right. to everyone that you doing tyrant mitzvahs is the greatest joy. Like serving the Ebishter is the greatest joy. That's why he was saying that it's a chilal Hashem. Right. No. If you're not doing a basimcha. And, um, and, um, what did I want to say about that? Oh yeah. Because what does Simcha like show? It shows that we want to do it. It shows that we want to serve the Ebishter. It shows that we, ch- Sorry, break, breaking through barriers. Oh, Margla Bipumi Zaraba, right. Yeah. So, um, right. So our Simcha, when we're choosing to be the Simcha, that's why I'm saying unconditional Simcha. Unconditional Simcha. It doesn't mean that I don't find a reason. Of course, I I have to contemplate and find all the reasons in the world to be the simcha. But the fact that it makes it, what makes it unconditional simcha is that I choose. It comes from me. I choose to be the simcha. Now, when I'm choosing to be the simcha, no matter my circumstance, and I can find all the reasons in the world, like you said, and we should contemplate, because the rabbi often says, contemplate on the great privilege you have, on the great schos you have, on the blessings that you have, and so on and so forth. But but so what I'm, so what I'm trying to say is that when we choose to be besimcha, we're showing the Abishan, we're showing the world, we want this. We are, like, this is coming from us, from our Ratzai. And that's the simcha of Purim that came after Matan Taira. Because when we received the Taira by Har Sinai, it came as a kaifim alem har kigigig, like the Har Sinai stood above our head, like in a way Hashem overwhelmed us, like with his like with his greatness and like glory, and like he compelled us to receive the Taira and all his majesty. But when did we really truly um discover our own Ratzayim to serve Hashem, do his Torah mitzvahs, that was in the time of Purim, which we're still in the month of Adar and coming after like the effect of Purim now, that um, in the time of darkness, when there was no Gilari Lekos, they couldn't feel any of Hashem's glory and love and splendor and Hashgacha on them. And, uh, you know, their life was in threat, but they, out of their own initiative, decided um to serve Hashem unconditionally and they and through that throughout the entire year of the Xera, not even one Mahshavas Chutz went through their mind to um to forego their Yiddishkeit when if they were to forego their Yiddishkeit there wouldn't be the 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 decree on them. So so what are we saying? We're saying that Simcha is essentially our choice and it's our initiative. What is gula? So simcha, the aspect of simcha is not just another ingredient, as we said in baking the cake. It's literally the etzem of Yiddishkeit. It's the etzem of gula. It's what gula is about. What is gula about? Gula is about us, the Yidin, wanting out of our own right, our own volition, and our own initiative, serving the Abishter and creating opportun- more endless opportunities of Yiddishkeit in the world. So me and Hani, this is like an introduction, Hani. So I'm going to give it over to you. We had a for bring in Hani Glick. You remember? You were sharing with me about Purim. We were sharing with me. I want you to share with everyone about what, like how you were saying, about how you were saying that like in Crown Heights, the energy, the vibes of Purim, like is different than how it used Uh to be and how it's all coming from Yiddin's initiative. And how that, like, yeah. we're comparing that to Gaula. Yeah, so actually I was in an Uber um, on Purim, going from one place to the next. And the Uber driver was like, oh, is there some sort, you know, some, what's going on today? Like, it looks, you know, it, it looks like exciting. So I said, yeah, we have a Jewish holiday today. And he's like, oh, yeah, you guys always have something. Last week I was here and there was also something going on. Everyone was wearing the same hat. He was talking about Sitin was the week before. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he was just like, oh, yeah, like I've never seen, you know, he was talking about Purim. And he's like, yeah, I've never seen Jewish people dressed up like this. And we were like, there was in Kron Heights, it was 
amazing. Like we were just going literally from up Kingston Avenue and it took us probably 20 minutes. There were trucks and cars and people and trucks with rabbit videos and dancing. And it was just like, Baruch Hashem, it was so, so freilach and it was so happy and it was so joyous. And it was so, it was so amazing to hear him say, you always have something going on. And I was like, it's true. Like, I feel like every day is like, there's just another a reason yantip. to celebrate. It's a yum tip. Like, and, and I feel like within, you know, like I grew up here, I grew up in Crown Heights, but to me, this is something that like has become, the Simcha has become bigger and greater. Growing up, I feel like, you know, it, even the dancing every night in Adar, like it's become bigger and more exciting. And every, I was, this is what I was telling you, Liat, that I mm -hmm. remember like Chassidosh Yom Tev and we're always special days. We're always exciting. But now all the kids are wearing Shabbos clothes on Yotis. Like first it was only Yotis Kislev. Now it's like Yotis Kislev, Chav Shva. Like all the special days are just getting more exciting. And, and let's say even the concept of having a white, like a table, like a nice tablecloth and a Yom Tif. I don't know. It wasn't necessarily, I don't remember it being so common when I was a young girl. Like, and now I feel like it's in every home, like every, I mean, at least it's on all the WhatsApp groups. Everyone's like, you know, posting their pictures of the Yom Tif table and talking about how you can, you know, make a, an exciting chassidushi yom tip with with you know a nice tablecloth and nice and candles and stories and this and I just feel like we're just always finding reasons to celebrate and to be excited because there are always reasons but it's just coming to the forefront now and and I was telling Liat that I just this is this is Mashiach Dick. this is Mashiach that it's like when Mashiach comes we know like all the yom tevim are going to be bustle right because it's like every day is a yom tip we're just we're exactly just experiencing miracles every single day and celebrating the miracles that we're experiencing every single day and that tied directly into the concept of Purim where it says all the MM Taibim are going to be battle besides for Purim why because on Purim we experience a miracle in the same way that we're going to experience miracles when Mashiach comes which is what that it's going to be embedded within nature we don't the, the miracles the miracles are almost so great that that we like you know it's not it's not a, it's 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 embedded within nature it's just up the, the so, meaning the miracles are so uh within so intertwined with nature they're so the mi miraculousness is part of nature so it's like you you can almost not see the miracle in Purim and that's the same thing how it's going to be in that's geula that's geula tikka miracles that they're just within nature and um, and that's why the Yom Tif of Purim is not going to be Batu Am Sheikh comes because that is the those are that is the way we're going to be celebrating miracles then also. And um, we were actually discussing this at our Purim Soda, and um, yeah. my father said a story about. Sorry, can you press the uh, mute? Um... There was once, um, meaning just to show this concept of how we could be having miracles. And we, they're so within nature that we don't even realize that they're miracles and we have to sort of open our eyes to see them. So there was someone who once, I, me, you know, I'm so not great with stories, but hopefully I'm not messing too much up, up too much of it up. But someone maybe once asked him, you know, how to, uh, how come there are no miracles today? And it was close to the time of um, maybe the Six Day War or the Gulf War. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> yeah. One of those. I think probably the Six Day War because um, um, anyway, so he said, so, you know, so he said, what do you mean? Like, look at the, the Six Day War just happened. That that was an incredible miracle. Like, ah, I hope this is, I'm like, I don't know, is Maisha Dayan with the Six Day War? Anyone know? But the person responded, um, oh, Maisha Dayan, he's an, an, an amazing general. Like, he's just, He's brilliant, you know, and so it's like the miracles are sometimes so hard to recognize because they're a part of nature. It's a part of life now. And um, there was another uh, example of the miracle, um, the miracles being within nature that I wanted to share, but it just slipped my mind. But if I remember it, I'll, I'll bring it up later. Later, but yeah, like this. It's, it's incredible that we're living in this time when we're just every single day. And really that's like, you know, when the Rebbe, like when we, when we learn the, when we, the Rebbe's for bringing every for bringing the Rebbe is saying like, this is the opportune time for, you, right. that's true. you know, like today is the day to, and it's like right. every day that last day, because every exactly. day is 
literally just a reason to be so joyous and to be besimcha and to celebrate miracles and to you know celebrate geula it's like this this is really it is everything we love that. it's just opening our eyes to it it's it's like the fact that we that we're like wait also today also today that's the you know that's really the pella the Rebbe is showing us how yes it's every single day like there's always there's always a way to connect this to geula and to simcha and to excitement there's tyra mitzvahs every day like we're doing this exactly so basically what you're saying yiddishkeit never changed but all of a sudden like the way that we're observing it is so much more rich and like like beautiful and like you know everything like we're to, then that's what the Rebbe's teaching us when he's saying today's the most opportune day and then the next week he's saying today's the most like every single day because he's teaching us that that's how we take initiative in our Yiddishkeit and recognize the great opportunity that we have in Tyra and Mitzvah to make every day like a yantiv and like to maximize the potential of the day in Tyra and Mitzvah so so in Geula like we were saying, every day will be like a yantav. The simcha of geula will be so great. We're gonna, the simcha will be felt so much so that the other yamin taibim, just re reiterating what you're saying, so much so that the other yamin taibim, like this, we're still going to be, they're not going to be nullified, but we're still going to be observing them. But it's the, it's, it's simcha won't be felt on a greater scale than any other day. And but when it comes to Purim, that the Simcha Purim will be felt on a greater scale because the essence of the Yom Tov of Purim is that it all came about through our initiative, right? Does that make sense? That it all came about through our initiative, and that's why even when Aaron Akain, when they were doing the sin of the golden calf, we were just reading about it in uh, Parshas Kisita, the Aaron Akain said. Like he when he was trying to push it off, and he said, "This day will be uh, to, to a holiday, something like that." Meaning, like he was trying to like go along with them, but he was saying, "Like, okay, we'll do the holiday, something like that tomorrow, or whatever, something about this day will be a holiday." And really, the sin of the golden calf happened on um, Yudzain Tamas on the seventeenth of Tamas, and that's like known as like the right, the most, the darkest day of <laughs> in history. <laughs> after the giving of the Tyra, because from then all the, right, the impurity came back into the world and we were punished for the sin of the golden calf in, in the stages, the pun, like the Hashem would give the punishment for the sin of the golden calf, like little by little, right? And uh, that led to the destruction of the Beis Amikdash actually years later. Um, so, and lead it, so Yudzain Batamas is the beginning of the three weeks. So when Aaron Akain said this is going to be a holiday, meaning this these days will be transformed to days of rejoicing, of holiday and yantiv and rejoicing. Why? Because the three weeks, which are the darkest time, like the it's like the midbar. It's known as the midbar in the Jewish calendar. It's because it's through our initiative, entire mitzvahs. The Rebbe taught us how to relate to those three weeks in such a revolutionary way, teaching us to be like in the simcha, like to start actually like living the simcha in those three weeks and celebrating every like opportunity in time and mitzvah to make a seum, to celebrate, to do this, to do that. And, and through our initiative in the galas, in zmana galas, in the dark times, utilizing the opportunity we have in Gullis and for Tyra and Midspace. We're transforming the the three weeks, the dark, this dark time, this midbar in Benaz Manim, we're transforming it to days of Sasrin and Simcha. So that's the essence of Gula. It's our initiative. Through our initiative, we can make anything happen. And that's like the greatest Simcha that, can, that expresses us as Yidin not receiving from Hashem, but the Rebbe says, now it's about the Yidin giving to Hashem, being mashpia on Hashem. It's so amazing because I never understood so deeply. That was so amazing, what, that connection you made between, because Simcha and Mashiach, by the way, they have the same letters in Hebrew. Right. So if you jumble it around. So I never understood it so well because it, something clicked for me before when you said, when we have Simcha and our relationship with Hashem, it shows that it's coming from us. And that's the whole idea of the Geula. It was like, right. 
But I also want to say, because, you know, Hani mentioned this idea of being able to perceive miracles of the ghoul, right? So, mm -hmm. um, because the Rebbe explains that the, what the I'm, so back to the mimer, just so that everyone understands what Hani meant. Um, so there's three kinds of miracles. There's miracles that break nature, that are above nature, like Kriyas Yamsuf, right? Um, then there's miracles that are included in nature where it's really obvious that it's a miracle that's enclosed in nature, like the Purim story or like um, the Hanukkah miracle. And then there's miracles that are so embedded in nature that only if they're called uh, Levadai, like to Hashem alone, he sees that it's a miracle. So in the Geula Shlima, and I mean, the Rabbi says we can already, we're, we're already in Yemos HaMashiach. So I think that we're already, we already have access to this, like you were both just saying. Um, that those miracles that normally are so embedded in nature that we wouldn't even perceive it at all, we're going to see them. Hashem is going to show it to us, that that's what's going to come out. So, and the Rebbe talks a lot in a couple of different sikhas about the importance of seeing the miracles, of noticing them, of mm -hmm. publicizing them. Right. Because, and, and so I, in, in a sikha from Peshalach, because I, I'll tell you, the reason why I'm saying this is because people might be saying, okay, it's so nice that you guys are talking about all these wonderful opportunities and miracles, but what about the fact that we're still in Gullis? And how, what does that have to mm, do with right. like, that we don't have the Gula Shlima? Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm a very practical, like, like a person. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what is, what, okay, great. So let, let's be grateful and celebrate what we have now, but how are we going to get to the next one? Mm -hmm. The Rebbe says, Dafka, mm -hmm. the more that we acknowledge the, the miracles that are taking place right now, the more we acknowledge Hashem, because, okay, so in this mimer, the Rebbe explains that what's the purpose of a miracle? To show Hashem's sovereignty over the world. Right, so exactly. miracles that have to break nature are limited because in order to show that Hashem controls the world, he has to nullify the world. So miracles that are embedded in nature show Hashem's dominance over the world in a much deeper way because he doesn't have to break nature to, to, to it's more of a chiber a bridging of opposites that Hashem can, keep nature in its state and still make a miracle through it. So the Rebbe says in Parshallah, the more that we recognize Hashem's sovereignty in our life by noticing the miracles, by noticing that Hashem is constantly there crafting our lives through miracles, it actually, because the world is in our hearts, it causes that okay. then the, the world and the non-Jewish nations also start to recognize Hashem. And if, if, if that, because the, the Rebbe says, why in the song, when we were going through Yom Sufer, we, do we mention the Mitzrim? The Rebbe says, because it's Dafko. Right, right. right. Simcha and our exactly. sovereignty affects the non-Jewish nation. Exactly. Well, they won't be drowned in the Yom Sufer and the Gula, they're going to actually conform to the will of God as well and assist us in our Avoda. So it's like a deeper... Uh, sovereignty and um, what the, what shows Hashem's sovereignty more than a yid who keeps Hashem's tire and mitzvahs right right or, or or then and then like yeah and the and the goyim and the non from our, and coming from us coming from us with a smile <laughs> exactly um, like yeah, in a way that it's visible yes yeah. and um yeah I wanted to say something about about like what are we like what about the fact that we're still in exile and the rabbi acknowledges the pain of that and i'm wondering if i should read it here from here meaning he's saying we can still along with the pain of the shekhinah being in exile we can still allow ourselves and we must we have an obligation to be besimcha but he doesn't like it doesn't um over uh, it doesn't like negate the pain of the fact that we're in Gallus, and we spoke about that a couple of times how when we acknowledge that that reality that we're still in Gallus, it grounds us to be able to know ashlichos in bringing mashiach to be aware of what we're supposed to be doing and to also relate it to others um also yeah, yeah. it reminds me of a concept that i learned recently about how a jew has like two has to live with sort of like two realities inside of themselves. One is like a total bitzel of like knowing, you know, our flaws, how low we are, all the things that we really need to work on, and that in a way right. it breaks you, you know. But on the other hand, 
total simcha in like the essence of who you are and the opportunity that you have. And the Rebbe actually says a Jew has a unique ability to live with, with, with live with opposites because we're a Jew. So it's really the same idea. It's like this broken. Right. The truth is the exile is a manifestation of our own brokenness because it's all dependent on us. The Rebbe told us. Right. <laughs> So there is this sort of inner brokenness of like, why am I not doing more exactly. while at the same time having a total simcha um, that we mm -hmm. are going to succeed and we are going to bring the goal and that exactly. we have the power to do it. Um, I, I wanted to hear from Hani Weisfish because you haven't spoken so much. I don't know. And I know Liat wants to read something. And I also do want to mention that we should maybe give some tips on Simcha and the talk. Yes, I actually, we do. We have some plans, okay. right? <laughs> Yeah, because it's also the, the we do we have some plans, so stay tuned. <laughs> I'm looking forward. So I have um, to add about the you. I think you said in the beginning, beginning about intrinsic simcha that simcha is intrinsic. I have a great muscle that really like resonated with me. Someone said that imagine it's the wedding of your friend, like a you know not such a close friend. So you go to the wedding, and then afterwards someone asks. You know, how was the food? Yeah, it was very nice. How was this music? It was very good. You know, I'm like, yeah, so nice, you know? And then imagine after the wedding of your sister and some goes over, so how was the food? How was the, the, the music? You're like, I don't know. Like, I'm just so happy. Like, I was like really happy. Like, it just, it's so intrinsic. Like, this is the happiness. Obviously, like, I don't need an, the music or the food. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was such a perfect muscle for our simcha that's not dependent on our outer external wow. situation. I love that so much. And like really helped me like reshift my like whole thing. Like, you know, when I'm gonna, you know, all the kids are gonna be in bed and like that's when I'll be happy, you know, that's peace and quiet, and now I can relax, <laughs> you know. But our simcha could be in every situation, in every like, I mean, if you think about those. You then with Mr. Snefesh in Russia, and they still had that simcha. I don't know how, but like there's a certain simcha that stays with you. I, I guess I'm like thinking now, I just read Remendel Fukapas' story of how they asked him, Why are you happy? I'm just reading his book, uh, My Gulag Life. So he said, they, they asked him, like all the other prisoners asked him, How are you always happy? And so he asked them, what, what did you do before you were um, in prison? This one said I was a doctor, this one said I was a lawyer, this one. So he says, I was a chassid and I'm still a chassid. Mm. Mm. That's, That's amazing. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, that reminds me of a similar story. I read like they were asking, I don't remember which chassid it was, but every chassid, was, every like person or chassid says, my rabbi, like, what's so great about your Rebbe? My Rebbe does this, my Rebbe does that, like this miracle, that miracle, whatever. And then the last one said, like the chassid said, um, the great, like the miracle is that I'm his chassid. Is that the same story? I don't know. I think he, um, it's a different story. I think he said, my, the, my Rebbe told me- The to fact that I'm a chassid? I think the Rebbe told me to do a certain business enterprise and it didn't work out, something like that. So they're like, okay, so what's the miracle? He's like, uh, oh, still ah, ah, <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, thanks for correcting me. Um, I, I love that story that you told about Mandar Futter Fast. I was like, I was a chassid and I'm still a chassid. Exactly. Right. It's like when Shmuel Monkus's house burned down and he said, Shlo Asani Guy. Mm. Right. <laughs> I can, I can you know, still be happy. I, yeah, like my God is still, he, you know, he said, exactly. he said to him, why are you saying Shloas and Egoin? He said, well, because if I was a non-Jew, my, my God and my house would have burned down. Right. Because, because they have little idols or gechkas, whatever that, that are their God. And he was like, but for me, he's like, my God, my God's still with me. I'm still mm -hmm. you know, with or without my house, you know? Mm -hmm. That's cool. amazing. And then I think it's also the definition of what it means to be a chassid, like you're saying what is my identity and to recognize that my identity is not dependent also on my mistakes, which was also a very big, big oh, thing for me. Yeah, I have to learn, you know, like I'm not going to be identified by my feelings. Like just because I'm in a bad mood right now, that's not me. Like I'm mm -hmm. still a kid. I'm still, my nishama is still there. My nishama is still happy with Hashem. You know, like it's, uh, mm. I think that really helped me like to, to like not get caught up, caught up in my like mood or my, 
or my mistake that I did, you know, because like we're not identified by that. That's not our identity. So, <laughs> yeah, the source for that is the Tanya. I remember reading it recently. I I have all the like Hayenu Tanyas that spoke about Simcha. I cut them out, saved them for today, but I, I can't even tell which one is which. But I do remember reading that like the that the Napashala kiss is maybe in exile because it's enclosed in the Napasha Bahamas, right? So it feels the Napasha Bahamas enlivens the goof. So the goof is affected by its circumstances. And when the goof is affected by its circumstances, then so is the nefeshala kit because it's enclosed in it. So we may feel down and low, but the Tanya says, but that's only because your nefeshala kiss is enclosed in your in your nefesh Bahamas, which is enclosed in your body. But your you maybe your circumstances, your your goof may feel low and distant from the Ebishter, but in truth, you're completely and totally bound up with Hashem. And, and in that alone, the Nefesh kiss takes a great simcha, like when we become aware of that. So I remember reading it. I hope that I'll be able to find it. Maybe you can read it inside. But uh, no, but it just validates that like, yeah, I can be feeling frustrated right now. I can be feeling whatever it is that's going around me and like feeling affected by it. But essentially when I, I can still come to that awareness that I'm still like connected. I'm still whole. I'm still, I still have every reason to like be besimcha and, and even like change, you know, then I can also affect that the way I can affect the way I think. And then I can affect the way I feel. And then I can affect the people, the sort the situation um, coming from that place when I'm able to like, to recognize, okay, now I'm feeling frustrated, triggered this and that. And like, and to recognize, well, that's not who I am, like we're saying, that's what I'm feeling. And because that's not who I am, I can do something about it. And there's obviously so many tools and means and ways that we can deal with our emotions today, Baruch Hashem, right? Yeah. And I think this is such a big bracha we have from Chesilis and the Rebbe that we're always whole, like, it's like it's a heart, right? you know, it's like a little thing, but like that's just covering it up. That's not like who we really are. We're all whole. We're all healed. Right? Exactly. We're all healed. The Rebbe says that we can bring Mashiach now before Mamish. Each and every one of us, men, women, and children can do it. And what we were for bringing about with Rabbi Strax is that there's no precondition to that. You don't need to be a refined and healed and human being. Right now, you can do something about your situation. Right now, you can bring Mashiach. Yeah. And it, it starts with one thought, one action, one smile. <laughs> yeah, this is reminding me of um, like the first time that the sort of the gravity, I guess, of what the Rebbe told us on Chafres Nisan hit me. Um, I remember I was actually for bringing with Liat <laughs> and um, she was introducing me to this concept of that, um, that, you know, that this, the state of Geula, you know, has, and maybe Sarah, I don't know if we elaborated on this the last few times, because I didn't. We, we want to hear how and you experienced you it. Elaborate, you could elaborate it, but I'll You're just gone. give the You're overview. Gone. So. Um, like the state of Geula has been here all along. Um, now though, like the Rebbe has given us everything we need and the world, like there's no more, you know, the Gayim are not oppressing us. So we really have everything we need to access the state of Geula. And like, we just need to open our eyes. We just need to access it. Like Tara and Mitzvah, it's like, we just need to do it. And it's like, you know, again, I, I grew up the Rebbe said it's up to us but I remember I sort of after I hung up with Liat I was I, I remember feeling like one second wait so like it's like meaning it's here and I just need to step into it I just I, I need to like bring it into reality like I need to make it real for myself and for everyone so like it's really up to me like it's actually my job like I used to think of it as more like like it suddenly hit me like I used to think of it as more like 
the whole idea of Mashiach, like obviously I'm gonna, we have to do one more mitzvah, but it's like, it's not really connected. It's like, I'm gonna do my things and then Hashem has to just make it happen. Now, of course, like Hashem could and will open all of our eyes in one instant and, you know, and we can, and we'll all bring it in. We're doing it together with Hashem. Right, we're doing it together with Hashem and every instant that that's not, that, that hasn't happened, like I need to, the next moment, I need to make that happen. It's like, it's really exactly up to me. Like the yeah. ball is actually in my court. I, I never really, like, I, I never, um, okay, one second. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all have that moment where we're right. like, oh, wow. Uh, like, uh oh. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, like, like it actually like, can do it. Like, it hits you. So that, yeah. So, first, there was this sense of like, it was like, like I said, like the gravity of it. Like, oh my goodness. Like, it's really up to me. Like, that's it. Like, I can't rely on anyone anymore. Like, it's really up to me. Like, forget it. I can't do this. Um, and I remembered that video, that video of the Reb Gem video. I don't know if, um, you know, any of you have seen it, but it's a really powerful video of a woman coming by the Rebbe after Chachas Nisan and saying like, Rebbe, like, and she was talking about her son who had passed away. And she's like, I'm waiting for you to bring Mashiach. Like, you can't do um... like, you know, like it was the Rebbe was like very serious and pointed to everyone on the line and said, oh like I said already, it's up to you and you and you. And like wow. the Rebbe was pointing with his finger, like yeah. this is serious. Oh like it's up to me. Like I I cannot rely on anyone. You know what I mean? Like it's up to me. I have to bring Mashiach. I have to get everyone on board. Like it's literally up to me. And it was very almost like it was too much. Like I almost felt like oh, like I wasn't it. I like felt like this kind of like sinking, like I, I was not like, but Baruch Hashem, after a few more days of processing and like, you know, realizing like one second with this incredible responsibility and incredible realization of the fact that it's up to me comes a huge, incredible sense of empowerment. Like, right. If the Rebbe exactly. actually gave it over to me and give it, gave it over to us and said like, I gave you everything. I gave you everything. You have to step into it now. You have to, you know, you have to bring it down. You have to make this your reality. Like if the Rebbe told that to us, then he, that means he gave us everything we need and we have the kaya. Exactly. It's like we suddenly, I was like feeling so empowered, like, oh my goodness, wait, I can do this. Like, you know, like it's actually up to me, which means I can actually do it. So like, all of a sudden, this tremendous sense of empowerment and simcha, like, whoa, like the Rebbe trusts me. The Rebbe gave this to me and the Rebbe gave this to each, me and each and every one of us. I'm saying me, but this is all of us, like, you know, and, and it's like, that it's a tremendous simcha, like we can do this. And I, you know, that's the concept of betachan, you know, like exactly. the Rebbe has the exactly. ultimate betachan in us and we have to have the betachan that we can do it. And there was yeah. this just tremendous, like, really, like, I suddenly felt so empowered and excited. And, um, sorry, <laughs> one second. So, so I listen, okay. Should I? Yeah, same mm -hmm. here. When I, when I, like, had to, like, resonate with this concept, they're really, afterwards, it really empowered me. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. my gosh, like, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to be this first great teacher, like we spoke last time. Like, it really empowered me that way. Like wow. I can think, I could change the world. I, I have it within me and we all have it within us. And we don't have to like get stuck with a little, you know, individual, like, oh, we were talking about the spiritual imperfections, right? And those things, because like, we have it all. We, yeah, we I actually, I, I wanted to share something that I learned actually to, on Shabbos that really I, I found very powerful that I think is very connected to this. Mm -hmm. so, um, in this mimer that I'm, I'm learning right now on on Kimetzitz uh, Eretz and Tzayim around in a flow, so the Rebbe actually says something really amazing. So this idea that that miracles um, in the Geula are going to be the kind of miracles that permeate nature and show Hashem's dominance in nature. So the Rebbe explains one of the amazing things about these miracles is that nature ma ma like maintains its metzias and yet it goes according to the will of Hashem. So the Rebbe says that the corresponding avoda for us is the bitzel of Kabbalah. 
And the Rebbe explains that when we, even though we have our own mitzvahs, yet we do turn mitzvahs anyway, even if it goes against our nature, or we fulfill one of the Rebbe's hayras, even if it goes against our nature, that is that is the key for the miracles of the gul. So I was thinking about that. Now, this is a mimer that the Rebbe said in the year you'd be, okay? Fast forward to Nun Aleph, and the Rebbe told us we're already experiencing the miracles of the Gula, right? It was one of the big things the Rebbe said is that we're seeing the prophecies of Yalkut Shimoni, that they're com- like the big miracles of the Gulf War. And the Rebbe was saying, like, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy in the days of your exodus. I will show you wonders. So these types of miracles where Hashem is showing us through Moshe Rabbeinu, through the Rebbe, that these miracles are happening, was happening, right? So I was thinking about how the Rebbe was talking about how this idea that what, what makes us a keli for these brachas of the miracles of the gula is us going against our nature. So I start to think about like what happens at, in those years, you'd base, like when the Rebbe became Rebbe, what happens? The Rebbe caused the entire Jewish world to go against its nature. Why? Because he sent them away from him. They said, you, wow. you go here, you go here. And people protested. People gave the Rebbe a really hard time. And he had to work the Jewish nation and get us to have this Kabbalah's all to go against our nature, to want to just wow. sit ourselves around the Rebbe. And now we have a new nature. Everyone wants to be an influencer. Exactly. And I was like, my goodness gracious, when it says that Mashiach Tenu is the one who literally transforms the world, the Rebbe literally transformed the Jewish nation. Now we have even non-Chabad, like, organizations are going out there and doing mitzvahim and it's popular to have yeshivas for people who didn't grow up from everybody's an influencer now and then I was thinking about this idea sorry I'm like it's like it really hit me on Shabbos and I was like this is unbelievable and it's so, so important for us to feel empowered by this because we're not doing it alone look at what the Rebbe did he literally gives us the kolchos and the and the and the he, he set the stage he's, he's doing everything through us and so the, the Rebbe says it in Parshas Noach that like Mashiach Tekinu is going to do it all. We just right. have to like be open Kalim to, to, to follow the Rebbe's Haraz and the Rebbe's bringing the Gula through us. It's so obvious. Like look at what the Rebbe did to the world. So wait, hold on. But I lost my train of thought. There was something that I wanted to say. You said we're not doing it alone. The Rebbe sent Shluchim. Everything yeah. that we're doing, we have yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I'm going to have to go back and watch the video and like see what I want to say. But I was just, I, oh, oh, You're oh, saying oh, about the going against your uh, nature, but so. Right. So, so there's a sicha where the Rebbe talks about Yosef at Tzadik. And he explains how his Indian, because he was the Neshama Klaus of his generation, that everything like was like came from him. So we see that even his counterpart in Klippa, Parai, also had dreams. Because Yosef's whole mm-hmm. thing was dreams. He was a dreamer, he was a dream interpreter. So everything in the world was like sort of reflecting Yosef at Tzadik. And I was thinking like, everybody in our time wants to be an influencer. It's like the thing. So like, they might not even re- like, and everybody feels it's their duty to like be an influence. So they mm-hmm. might sleep a dick of notions. They might not even have an, a message that's that valuable, but they still feel that they need to get on their phone and tell the world their view, right? That is mamish coming from the Rebbe because the Rebbe literally made the whole world realize that their purpose is dear Batakhton and we all have to influence the world around that. And yeah. so I think that just seeing this also, when the Rebbe says, open your eyes, you have Mashiach Tzikinu. You literally have the Geula unfolding through you and around you. This should also give us so much simcha because if you think about what the Rebbe did, he literally took a broken Jewish community that was so lost after the Holocaust, so broken, so just like a lot of like mitzvah observance was sort of like dwindling. There were like no mechitzas at simchas. There were no beards. There were no people didn't cover their hair. I mean, there's so many things that we take for granted that the Rebbe just like fixed all these breaches in observance and then took us and sent us out. And was just like, go turn over the world, you know? But it's just like, we, it, like our, the nature of the Jewish people has changed. That's and I think true. we have to realize that. And I, I just, I, I, it's, yeah. That's, I, what, that's what we say. When I was thinking about that, I was over Shabbos, I was like, 
whoa, it's like, that's intense, you know? And so now we have to take it to a whole new level, but we have to realize that like at every moment our, at that our nature shifted, we have to shift it even more, but we are shifting into the gu'ula. Like we're there, it's happening. It's that nothing can stop it. It's right. a prophecy from the Torah and the Rebbe told us it's happening. So we are going to have the Gula Shlema. And that's also what we have to have major batachan. And as we have to, like you guys said, we have to believe in ourselves because the Rebbe empowered us. And at the end of the day, anyway, the Rebbe is working through us, but we just have to put our hands on the right. keyboard and, and type, you know, we have to just mm -hmm. like, let the Rebbe work through us and just, and just watch as the world keeps just turning. Over. Exactly. So I want to build up, build off on that. Um, that about miracles happening through us. Um, yeah, so 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 the Indian of Geula, right? There's the Avir of Mashiach, right? The air and the uh, sorry, there's the Avir and there's the air. There's the light of Mashiach, and then there is the the breath, the air, right? Of Mashiach. So the air, the Gilui, the light of Mashiach is is um Help me on this one. Is, okay. <laughs> okay, you'll see. <laughs> but you can still. It's totally amazing. Man. I'm sure you can still. <laughs> so right, it's like the rabbis um is seeing the no 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 I don't know, but I uh, know. So uh, yeah, okay. We have the avir. We have the messias of the rebbe. We have everything that the rebbe has accomplished. But what's the our or shall Mashiach the gilui of it is seeing how the Rebbe has affected me. Uh, That's what I'm trying about, to say. You're talking about the Matthias and the and the um and the guilt the the revelation of Matthias or Matthias and Gilly. Because the Rebbe says that in every generation we have the Matthias of Mashiach, but now we actually have the Gilly of Mashiach. And the Rebbe says that the Gilly of Mashiach or the revelation of Mashiach is when you right. his activities. You see exactly his on the world through his activities. Right. So exactly. We have everything that he's done and accomplished, but more specifically to see the Irish Mashiach in my life, I want to be able to open my eyes to how the Rebbe has affected me yeah. and to utilize that to motivate me in everything that I'm doing. Yeah. So um, actually um, my kids were participating in a Kinos Hakel with uh, somebody, just one second. Yeah, that's amazing. That's like the story you were saying, Hani, about like the miracle of the chassid is, is that he's a chassid. That right. the rabbi so I was, sorry. has to be his chassid. Oh, right. Exactly. So I was <laughs> uh, Also, Hani, you said in the, in the other story how this, the father of someone who became from saw a clear miracle from the rabbi, but he said, right? He had this, such a story, Hani. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, right. Sorry about that. Yes, that story is also <laughs> a great story about how someone completely like, I just, I wish I would know the details. I, I don't want to repeat. You told it. it really well that time. Yeah, did I tell it? Right? Okay, so I'll, I'll try it. It's, it's, it's a it. good I, story. I think it's in the story of, of my Australian encounters or something, or maybe it's called... Something about like someone from Australia wrote about his encounter. Okay, I, I don't even know, but something about Australia and encounters with the Rebbe. Let's let's put it like that. But it's a story of um, someone, a Baal Shuva, His father wasn't very, um, you know, for his life decision to become a Baal Shuva. And okay, that's how it was. This was before Gimel Tamas. So when the story of Hetevis happened. Um, at that time, the Rebbe told all the Hasidim um, that they can all, after he tavis, like that they can all write to the Rebbe and the Rebbe will answer anything that they that they request, that they put in a request for. So this person decided to ask his father, you know, to tell his father about this opportunity. You know, he figured he'll he'll give his, he knows usually he's really not interested in anything, but this is such a, an amazing opportunity. How could he not tell him about it? So he told his father, and his father said, okay, fine, like, I'll give this one a try. So he wrote a letter to the Rebbe, and he sent it in. And he used to go golfing with a friend. Um, again, here's where, like, I hope I'm getting the details right. But the idea is definitely there. 
So he was, and his friend noticed that he looked upset. So he asked his, he asked, the, the friend asked him like, what's wrong? So he told him that he went, he wrote a letter to the Rebbe. And in the letter, he asked the Rebbe for a bracha that his fishing should be successful. He used to go fishing. And in the, the last few times that he'd gone fishing, he really didn't catch any major fish. And it was just like not a successful experience. So he asked for a bracha for Hatzlacha. And I mean, I don't know if he said Hatzlacha, but success in his fishing. And he went, and the time after that, that he went fishing, he was with a, a friend going fishing. And he caught like a crazy amount of fish, like maybe, I don't know, hundreds or that something nuts. And he's like, so he was upset now. Like, that means that this is truth, that this is MS. And he, he was upset. Um, okay, so then the next time he comes back and he's totally, he's good, he's happy. So the man asked him, oh, like you worked it out. He said, yeah, I realized that Oh, I forgot to mention, I think his friend caught either one fish or no fish, like, you know, something crazy like that. And so the the golfing friend asked him, like, it seems like you worked everything out. I was like, oh, yeah, I realized that that day the wind was blowing in the, you know, in the wrong, the, the wrong direction for the other guy. And it was in the right direction for me. So, like, it's fine. It wasn't the Rebbe, you know. <laughs> so sometimes like we have the miracle like right there, but it, we still have to accept it. Like we, you know, like Sarah, you were saying, like the Rebbe told us that everything's here, you know, everything we, we have to, like the, the gula is happening through us, you know, we have to just bring it into our life. Exactly. Um, and that also reminds me about another example of this is when there was the most recent conflict, I think like it, not, I mean, now there's been, a, you know, other things, but there was like one of those big, you know, missiles coming in from Gaza um, recently. And there was like, a, a, I don't know, some, again, like 500, 900, I don't know, missiles and like Baruch Hashem, nobody got hurt. There were no no injuries or casualties, Baruch Hashem. And I remember there was a WhatsApp post going around, not from a Chabad person, saying like, does anyone realize like everybody like wake wow. up you know, what just happened here? There was like, whatever amount of missiles it was coming in from Eretz Yisrael and Bar Hashem, like, it was like, miraculously, no one got hurt. Like, if, if it, you know, and I remember he used in the, in the WhatsApp post that was going around, or was it, it was like a picture of a Facebook post that was going around. And he said the words, like, if you don't realize, like, if, if you, if you're not realizing that this is a miracle, then open your eyes. And I was like, there we go. Open your eyes. Wow. Like, those words, like, yeah, everyone exactly. is embracing the Rebbe's words like they don't even realize they don't even realize but the Rebbe's words are permeating exactly. everyone like you know it's even in the Gaia now you know like everyone is yeah. the Rebbe is affecting the whole world through us it's right. just everywhere amazing um yeah to bring us so much joy and uh, should give us the so, to just continue to bring it more yeah. and more I mean, I mean exactly. so that was a little, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, I you want to finish? I just remember what I was I was earlier talking about, right? First that sense of like sort of disappointment right. and like oh, and then that sense of empowerment and it really like that empowerment really did bring me a lot of joy and like excitement in like okay, that's it. Like now it was just like everything I do really makes a difference. So if you know that what you're doing makes a difference, it's like so motivational, you know? Like that's so motivating. Like let's go. So I'm going to do more and I'm going to try and, you know, just every mitzvah that I do makes a difference. Every positive thought I think makes a difference. Every positive, you know, word that I say makes a difference. Like this is real. This has real impact. It's not just like, like I said, like disconnected. That's how I used to sort of, I never realized that I thought of in that way, but that's how I used to see it. Like very disconnected. Now I realize that it's literally me like doing this, bringing Geula into my life and bringing into the lives of everyone into the lives of everyone around me and it really did create this excitement you know and this like it used to be sort of not used to be obviously everything's a constant avida, but I remember mm -hmm. like really having like Mifsayim was always a hard thing for me you know just approaching people on the street like I had to think for 10 minutes before I could finally approach them and then it's too late you know and like since that realization it's become so different because it's like how could I not how could I not like bring geula to this yid right now like hit, this yid doing a mitzvah is like you know and I really like try to and I and it's like I live on Kingston and Rutland there's Rutland Park over here I was in the park and I saw this woman with like a necklace um that said like ima on it and normally I would have just like 
oh, like been thinking, you know, this time I was just right away like, oh, your necklace says email, like perfect, so easy. And we started chatting and she lives right here. And, you know, we we spoke, I didn't have candles with me, but we spoke and like, it was like, so it used to be so unnatural for me. And suddenly I didn't have to break my nature. Like I, it just, it just was like, so it was automatic. Like, how could I not speak to her about Shabbos candles about, you know, and hopefully Mirza Shem one day will have her over. Like we, you know, we, we, I have her number, like we got, you know, it was like, it was amazing. Cause this, these, this was not natural for me. And even like just the other day, again, I was in an Uber. Ubers are great by the way. And like, I, again, <laughs> I have to actually, like, I was thinking I need to like ask people what to do in this situation. There was this Russian Uber driver and he, like, I knew right away, as soon as I got into the Uber that he's probably Jewish. So right away, I just said, oh, you're Jewish. Like normally I would have never said it if anything, maybe at the end of the ride. And he's like, yeah. And like, I was like, hey, what do I do? Like, I uh, can't give him Shabbos candles. Like uh, it was at night. Anyway, I'm like, who I'm going to call, you know, so it's like, we can't do spilling. So I have to like, you know, maybe carry, like I was thinking it's Pesach, like carry brochures with me. But again, awesome. it was just so like, that just like things changed for me in this way, but not, I didn't like, it wasn't almost, it wasn't like an Avaida, you know, it was just by realizing that we're empowered to do this and we need to do it because we need to affect every corner of the globe. Like we need to reach everyone. And Hashem is obviously putting us where we need to be to reach people. We need to just reach out to them and like, you know, bring, you know, so we just, we spoke about Pesach and we, I was like, I, you know, trying to, you know, bring out his neshama in whatever way I can. Um, and hopefully it's, you know, for sure, not even hopefully it's definitely going to have results, but it's just amazing how it changed, like how that changed for me. Mm. I had a similar thing last year also when I really started realizing the power of Torah mitzvahs and how that is actually what causes the gula to unfold and I was like I also I, I actually it's not my nature like it's so hard for me to do so I am I feel like such a lunatic but I'm like first of all okay I'm gonna have to be crazy for Mashiach because that's like we have to do it yeah I just grabbed one of my daughters because she she loves to do Mitzvah, my 16 year old. So I was like, I'll just make her come with me and then I'll force myself to do it because I'll want to be a good influence. And I did. And I was asking people if they're Jewish and I was handing out masses off of my front porch because I live in Manhattan. So it's like everybody who was walking by, like it's not a Jewish, it's not like a religious community. So it was like if they were Jewish, they weren't, you know, they weren't, they didn't have Shmar Matzah yet for Pesach. Um, and it was very empowering, but I, I actually felt that way the other day when I was in, um, I was in Union Square Park and I was going to the farmer's market to get, they have pasta sterile bread in one of their, um, it's like a little hidden secret, no one knows, um, but it's, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a pasta sterile bread bakery and I was buying it, and, but the people who work there aren't Jewish and I'm, I was thinking to myself, like, I really need Noah Hyde pamphlets. Like, I need something to have these people. Like, how could I, like, be interacting with people and not be doing with Soyam? But I actually find it very hard. Like, I, I know I need to do it now. And I feel it, like, so intensely. And I'm like, what do I care? Why do I? And the Reb actually says one of the voters of our generation is not to be embarrassed by scoffers. Because, like, I, what am I afraid of? That, like, they're not going to hurt me. I'm just afraid that they're going to ridicule me. You know what I mean? Like that they're going to like think I'm weird. It's like, why do I care? Why do I care that they think I'm weird? But I care. So I have to like, I have to push myself. It gets easier and more natural. I think the more you do it. That's the bit to love going against your nature yeah. that you were talking about. Yes, exactly. A hundred percent. I know I need to do it. Like, I'm like, but I'm like, Hani, like, I'm still at that stage where I'm trying to come up with all these scenarios in my mind that are going to make me more comfortable. Like, how yeah. am I going to do this? Like, it's all in my head. I'm imagining how I'm going to do it, but I'm not actually doing it. Mm -hmm. except, that, except last year for Pesach, which was like a big deal for me. Well, handing out matzos. I got to do it more. You guys got to hold me accountable and are for bringing group. Do we want to, <laughs> so I have a couple of like important things that I want to get across before we end the for bring in and I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be successful because my kids are waiting for me. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Do we still have a little bit more time? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, if we, we want to open it up for questions. We don't have a lot of time, but okay. we could not do All that. right, so let me, okay. So we're talking about, first of all, like just like building off the onion of being empowered, how important that is. Um, because I spoke in uh, our previous Zoom for bringing, I'm not going to say my whole story again, but like, you know, the Rebbe says, Iris, but 
the Toyo by Kaylin to take on. Like now, like we stand perfected. All we need is to bring that out in ourselves. And asu kolashar bichal tacham. Do all that you can. If you need to like gain like this resource or that resource or this tool or that tool, whatever it is to bring it out, then do it. And Bajar Chateva, obviously through Tyrant Mitzvah, we have it all. So um, I just wanted to also like get across a message to us as women and mothers and, you know, going through whatever challenges we're going through. When we go into our coaching sessions or healing sessions or whatever it is, or counseling or whatever it is, or therapy, we want to be able to go into it empowered, not because I'm lacking or I'm broken or I'm in such a desperate situation, but knowing that I'm doing this because this is part of like Hashem wants me to do this. Hashem wants me to empower myself through this. Now, like I'm going into it empowered. Um, now I'm going to learn some new things that are going to help me. I'm going to learn some new things that are going to help me, but I'm going into it not because I lack anything, because at, like at every, Hashem gives us every single opportunity to do what Hashem, every single moment Hashem gives us the opportunity to do what he wants. And, um, and he enables us at every single moment. So, and also if we think to ourselves, so if I do like this kind of approach, whatever it may be in parenting or marriage or whatever, if, if I don't learn to do this, I'm not going to be able to live go oh, if I don't learn to do this. I'm not. So when we think of, when we think of our advisor, so to speak, in that way, we're putting ourselves in a box and we're not allowing ourselves to really be empowered by the Rebbe's message of Gula that we always have the ability to do what Hashem wants at every single moment and besimcha. And that's the key is the simcha because when we choose to be besimcha, we take that initiative. Again, we said Gula is us taking initiative, showing Hashem that we want, meaning Gula is we want. In Gula, we naturally do Hashem's tar and mitzvahs with nothing compelling us. Why? Because in Zaman of Gulas, we took initiative in Yiddishkeit that, that all the tar and mitzvahs and all the all Hasidus has brought out that all Yid wants to do is Hashem's mitzvah. All Yid wants to do is, is do Hashem's rating. So when we take initiative now and we exert ourselves, we apply ourselves and we give ourselves to the Ebishter to our right, and we do a Basimcha, that's what's going to make it a Gula Amitis Vashlema. That's what's going to make the our tired mitzvah permanent and natural and eternal. So, um, so yeah, so that's just my like message to each and every one of us and myself included because I'm always looking for the next thing that can help me grow so just to, to do it in a way that's empowering and as soon as it's not yeah we want to be able to push through those moments and allow ourselves to experience what we need to experience in order to grow and to learn about ourselves learn about ourselves learn about the people around us learn and remember how much like the Rebbe trusts in us and so on and so forth, to know that the, the challenges that we're going through, and I tell this to a lot of the people that come to me for help, and I try to remind myself as well, like the, the Nisiyanis that we have, right? We shouldn't be calling them Nisiyanis. It's a miracle. This miracle is waiting to happen for you. This miracle is waiting to happen for you. But Hashem needs us to be his agent in allowing this miracle to come into the world because you want this particular miracle to come through you mm -hmm. and so and so when Hashem gives us this quote-unquote challenge which, re which is really a miracle it's because he wants this the pitar and the solution for this challenge to come through you so that you can bring glorify Hashem in the world that much more because when it'll come from you you're going to affect so many people with this miracle and you're going to be able to help so many people and glorify Hashem in a way that nobody else can. So, um, and so this is what I wanted to share. Oh, that's the so miracle. Wow. That was very powerful. Right? right, exactly. And, but this is, this is going to be the crunch. N and, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. So, but this is the crunch. Okay. <laughs> and Fanny, are you? Uh, uh, this is gonna. It's a. Uh, you already have the spoilers now. Um, but okay. But I'll share it anyways. Um, okay. So basically, like the Rebbe says in a, a letter. First of all, I'll, I'll share the background of this. I had um, on Purim. On Purim, I was driving uh, my kids around. We're giving a shalachmanis, and I had maybe some of you have already heard this because I made a voice note about it. 
but I wanted to, I had plans to go to our Chabad house for the Suda. But my kids had in mind that we should go to a different Chabad house in a further location for like the carnival and so on and so forth. And they have a Suda. But initially I didn't plan on that. And they really like kept, they really kept me out. Like they were very adamant about it. They were very expressive about it. How they want to go to that Chabad house, to the carnival. And at a certain point in my mind, I agreed that, okay, I want to make them happy. I like, this is poem. I really do want to make them happy. I'll, I decided that I will take them there. But I didn't want to tell them yet because they were still like so unhappy about the situation. And it didn't feel appropriate for me to say, like, you know what? We're like, I should I could have done that, but I just wasn't there yet. So and um so even though I had already decided that I'm going to do this for them and for us and we're gonna go to this place that they want. But they still didn't know. And so they were still very like unhappy and very expressive, expressing that very much. And I was trying to empathize with them that whole time and explain to them how I'm going to think about it and so on and so forth. And they're like, so, so it reminded me of like Hashem has this miracle for us, for each and every one of us. And also in Bechlau, the Geula, he's giving it to us. And the rabbi says in the letter, it's a promise that Hashem makes in the Taira. I have made you, I will carry you, I will sustain you, and I will deliver you. This is a promise. The miracle that you're waiting for is yours. You're going to receive it. We don't know when. We don't We don't necessarily know when. But so the rabbi says in the letter to this person, the Abishter takes care and sustains 1.5 billion people. And I said this probably in a previous Zoom for bringing it. And so he has no problem taking care of you and providing you with the solution that you need and so on and so forth but you so you have two options option number one is that you can continue to have your concerns and worry but what will happen is that when the when the situation resolves itself Hashem will give you your miracle and their situation resolves itself um you're gonna be left with a new worry you're gonna like worry on all the lost time and energy that uh on all the lost time and energy on on your on the needless worrying that you have and so whereas option number two is if you have simcha and bitachin knowing that you're going to have what you want the situation will resolve itself when it finally does resolve itself you're going to be able to be proud of yourself to say how proud you are of yourself for the way you handled it. That that whole time you stayed calm and you were with Simcha and you had your faith, you were staying connected to Hashem, so on and so forth. So really like Hashem has that miracle that we're each waiting for personal, individually and as a cloud. We don't know when we we can actually bring it earlier, right? We can, we can bring it about sooner than later. If we recognize, first of all, the opportunity that we have, because Hashem doesn't want to give, right? We were saying, Hashem wants to give this to you, but he wants us to take pleasure in this. He wants us to, the way that we take pleasure in it, naturally through earning it. He doesn't want to give us bread of shame and so on and so forth. The greatest pleasure is when we earn it, we accomplish it, and it comes from our initiative. So the thing is, but the Rebbe also said, by the way, that like, like that we should want Mashiach, even if it means that like, meaning like we can think to ourselves, I, I read it in the Chayin, it was a Limud Nyanik Gula Mashiach, he was saying a person can think to himself, I, you know what, better that Mashiach shouldn't come yet because I didn't deserve, I don't deserve it yet. I didn't earn it yet. I didn't do enough. I didn't really accomplish it yet. But the Rebbe is saying, no, like, no, we should want Mashiach and anticipate Mashiach. And like, th like, even now, even when we are spiritually deficient, even when we still have our flaws and we haven't fully perfected ourselves to earn it yet, because that wanting Mashiach, that anticipation for Mashiach on its own, is also going to create like the merit for it right it's yeah. like us accomplishing it but like but the glory of mashiach is so great and it's gonna affect us so deeply and the whole world so vastly that that overrides any like merits that i lack that i would want to like have for mashiach by my, like right 
like the Gilead is going to be so great. It's going to reveal our un, like unbreakable, like unconditional bond with Hashem. That's greater than anything that I can accomplish on my own. That's greater than any spiritual imperfection that I can fix within myself. So, so anyways, but okay. So that, so what I was trying to yeah, say, so earlier, you're saying two things, Leah, just to like, and then you can continue. I just want yeah. to like, so that's not confusing. On one hand, you're saying that we want to keep doing our efforts and keep exactly we want to be proud of ourselves that when the miracle comes exactly yet at the same time we're not like we're not pushing the miracle away saying let me work harder for it so that it's out of shame so it's like on one hand we are we're staying in the game with simcha and bataha knowing the miracle is going to come any second but we want the miracle we want Ka'ula right exactly it's literally that paradox you explained it so well so, go ahead, but you could do where I'm done. I didn't mean to interrupt. Exactly. It's literally that paradox. Like, Mashiach can come now. We want Mashiach to come now. But at the same time, we want to maximize this time. Actually, the Rabbi has a huge, sorry, not a huge. The Rabbi has a sicha about it, which we spoke about in a different frame. But whatever. The point mm -hmm. is, is that, <laughs> the point is this. If you knew, like, that miracle that you're waiting for is going to come knocking on your door today. Okay? Like, would you like how do you want to receive it how do you want to prepare like do you want to how do you want to prepare for that i want to know i've done everything that i can i want to know that i like i want to know that i want to be like the most proud of myself i want to come prepared i want that miracle to come in and say like, you know what i'm saying like right <laughs> like we did it right so and, and like not to regret any like right not to have any of those regrets but like obviously we're still human but <laughs> but the thing is is that the rabbi says to this person hashem promises promises you that he will deliver you okay this miracle is waiting is is going to come to your door at any moment how so how do you want to receive it and that changed my that helped me so much. Like I felt like it was with like with my kids. This is just like a muscle, but like with my kids, like you know, if they only knew that I already agreed to take them there, you know, they'd be so they'd be happy. But like they'd think like, oh my gosh, like all this time was wasted on like arguing about it and so on and so forth. So same thing for me. Like you know, this miracle that is gonna knock on my door at any moment now i know that i'm gonna come to it prepared i don't want to come in it like saying oh i should have trusted hashem or like oh my god like and then when it will come like for sure when it comes the rebbe says when the gula comes it's gonna come as a matnas chinam it's gonna be way greater than we ever expected even though with all the efforts that we put into it it's still gonna feel like a gift like hashem is just granting this to us but for me, it was a big game changer to think like, wait, when this miracle is going to come knocking on my door, how do I want to show up? Like, I want to be prepared right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I can't give the exact, like all the details, all the juicy details here. But, but, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Can <laughs> I say that your muscle, your muscle actually has another part to it. That yeah. you were saying how you felt like you were because they were so unhappy, you didn't feel the right time to shoot. Exactly. Business. Thank so, you. So same here. Like if we were, if we like this is the Zaya, right? If we show radiant face, Hashem mirrors it back to us. So like right. the, the quicker we have Simcha, this brings Gula. That's exactly. probably like part of that initial. Exactly. That's what the Rebbe's telling this person. Like if you're going to be the Simcha now, first of all, the Simcha affects the miracle, makes it happen earlier, because that's what I, we were talking about. The miracle, essentially, we do have in the in our capability to bring it earlier. Same thing with the Gula. We have the capability to bring it earlier. Right now, yeah. Right, right now. So, um, so but, and the Rebbe always says, like, how do you want to show up if you know that right now that the Freddy Karebi is gonna is standing beside you and watching you? And like, how do you want to present yourself? How do you want to, him to see you? So it's really the same thing. Um, and about that, yes. Yeah, so and we know that as soon as the joy breaks through all barriers, that's what Hani Rasbish was saying. That our simcha alone 
meaning the whole gullus and the whole challenge is only to bring out, like we said, our pintaliyid, which is our unbreakable, unshakable commitment to the Ebishter. So as soon as we're already there, we're already in that space, we're committed, we're besimcha, then then the Nisayon like solved itself. The problem solved itself because it was only there to bring that, to bring that. That's Geula. Geula is, is our desire for Hashem. So, so it solves itself. That's why it breaks through the barriers and the limitations that are withholding the miracle. So we are Hashem's agents. We're Hashem's agents for the Geula to happen through us. We're Hashem's agents for all those miracles that are knocking on our door, waiting to waiting for us to receive them and accept them into our life. We And we want to come prepared and say, we did it. We're proud of ourselves. Do we want to open it up to anyone who wants to like share? We only have like five minutes left. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Questions? Let's do that. Let's hear from, from anyone who'd love to share with us. Yeah. Did you want to share something? Sure. This power of Simcha, when I was in from one very powerful interaction that happened, which was a split second, I was walking in a hospital. I don't know why I was in the hospital. It was before I went to Israel. But I was questioning, maybe I was in college. And I walk by, I see a from woman I knew enough. I came from Baltimore. I had from relatives, so I knew she's from. And she had the most peaceful look on her face. And I was searching. I was not at peace. And I was feeling very insecure. And she was confident with this inner radiating simcha that to this day, I remember it. Wow. And I tucked it inside. So this idea of what you're saying about this simcha and how it's going to affect other people it's it's so so true wow that's beautiful right and also like exactly our message of geula is going to be more readily accepted by anyone we convey it to when it's coming from that place right from simcha from a place of simcha yeah and like Liat said, you're working. You're working on making simcha seri like serious. Business. Oh right, right, right. I didn't say that. I forgot. Okay, can I say that? For a moment? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like so. As soon as we um we decided that the next for bringing would be the topic on simcha and bitachin, I started to take simcha so seriously. So I like that it's an oxymoron taking simcha seriously. And um, but seriously, as soon as I took it seriously, I I saw how much of an effect I can literally have on my surroundings. I didn't realize that our simcha is that powerful. Like nobody can really like, like nobody can deny like a person who is truly besimcha and like that unconditional simcha that we were talking about. And like, you can't argue. There's no room for arguments. There's no room for whatever. So, and everything can be solved much more easily when we come from that place of simcha. Um, because then the other person is not going to want to fight us, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're curious, like, what makes you so happy? Like, exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's amazing. I have to go. Um, I don't know yeah, if you guys want to continue. Um, so um, empowering for me. Thank you, everyone, for all your short tears. Yeah. I oh. um, personally had a hard day, and I was like, Simcha. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I also had an um, abnormal <laughs> hard day today. <laughs> <laughs> um, great so I think things. that shows that, like, this was, you know, I think that Even, in itself right. shows that, like, this was important because yeah, it's like, okay. Exactly. Let's see. Even if with, with our hard day, we could. Are we going to push through? Yeah. Yeah. Last night's Living Tara was all about gratitude. Did you, watch? Did you see it? No. Yeah. All about, like, gratitude and, like, yeah. and, and gratitude is connected with Simcha and the Tacham because 
it's very easy to to get down and and then in that overlook all of the immense brachas that we already have. And That's so true. So gratitude also really helps you also do the avoda of simcha because the second that you start thinking about, oh, the Rebbe says that we're supposed to thank Hashem for our very breath. And um, and then the Rebbe actually says, and you might ask this question, this question I always had is, but like Hashem created, like Hashem didn't ask us if we want to be created. The truth is he did. In the essence of our soul, we did choose to be here. But the Rebbe says there, what you might say, Hashem didn't ask me to be created. So why am I thanking him for giving me the air that I need to stay alive, you know? But the Rebbe says, he doesn't actually answer the question. He just says, but you have to thank Hashem for literally every breath. So I was thinking like, then obviously, and we're thanking Hashem for it. It means that it's a huge bracha to be here, even if we don't see it in the moment. But um, but having gratitude ultimately help, helps us mm -hmm. in everything else. So but it's also it's yeah, like you said, it's synonymous with simcha. It it also um, allows yeah. us to bring bring in all that good. Yeah. Um, earlier as opposed to later. And also I said this on our group. I don't know if you guys had the chance to hear it, but I was listening to a pod. Uh, who was it? It was a JLI interview with um, students who were interviewing Reb Simon Jacobson. So they were talking about struggles, challenges. And one of the students asked like a very innocent question. Like, so how do you like overcome your Yetzir Hara? So so this was, we were talking about different strat on our group, on our for bringing group, we were saying different Kaylee, different tools. What should we do? We should pause, put our hands on our heart, feel ourselves, validate ourselves. No, no, no. Like we were saying all, we were for bringing different, different like ways of handling our emotions. Not. So what I loved about what Rabbi Simon Jacobson said is that like the Chiddush of the Rebbe, what's the Chiddush of the Rebbe? Going forward to Geula, the Chedchila River. He didn't say these words. What he said was, you flood your life with goodness and light and holiness. And when you flood your life with goodness and light and holiness, all the dark, a little bit of light dispels a whole lot of darkness. And that's really the shita of the Rebbe. That we can't, like, even when we're down, we can't be, allow ourselves to be down on the fact that we're down. <laughs> we have to do more um, in the realm of goodness and kindness and holiness. And also, I, I wanted to read because this whole, uh, right, we're still in Adar, and we said Purim was inspired and um, by Maisha Rabbeinu, and, uh, right, and Nissan is inspired by the Rebbe Meshlik and Al So I have a Hayom Yom from Zion Adar, very apropos. I, it's just, I love it so much, and it's so, like, in line with what we're saying. So I'm going to read it. Every year, yeah, yeah, it's very short. Yeah. Every Yid must know that wherever he may be, he is an agent of the master of all, charged with the mission of actualizing the Abishter's will and intent in creating the world. To illuminate the world through the light of the Tyrant and divine service, this is achieved through the performance of practical mitzvahs by, inculca by inculcating in oneself positive character traits right isn't that the whole goal in like one wow. one bite <laughs> was that zion adar aleph or base that was adar aleph okay thank you <laughs> so i'm just gonna end off with uh yachi yeah should we do it and a blessing and uh, and a blessing for each and every one of us to have ultimate uh, success beyond bounds and joy beyond bounds um, in, in our individual lives and together as a cloud with uh, the scholars of the Rav Shlita Melech immediately now. This year, Alef Nisan, this Pesach, in the Beis Amik Dasha Shlishi. Before, before Nisan, before Rosh Chaydash Nisan, the Rebbe says yeah. that it can happen even before that, already in Adar. The Rebbe says that, yeah, for sure, I mean, every day. Good night, everyone. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining.